Hello, everyone. How many are ready to receive something from the Lord tonight? If you have your growth book, we're getting ready to go into chapter 5 of the book of Mark. And in chapter 5 of the book of Mark, what you're going to find is three people that get an amazing miracle that it looked like, well, it was, it was totally impossible for them to get that miracle. One of them was a man that was so demon possessed that they left him in a cemetery. And what they would do to try to control him was put chains on him. But he was so demon possessed that he would break the chains and there were, there were no chains that could control him. The scripture describes that man screaming under the torment of these demons day and night, cutting himself naked in that cemetery. That's where he lived. Jesus traveled from one side of a lake to another side. They got through a storm to get to him. And after they got through that storm that the disciples thought they could, couldn't, get to it, that st couldn't get through, they met up with him right at the shoreline, basically. And the demon began to speak up right away, like, we know who you are. And then Jesus asked him, who are you? And he says, legion, for we're, we're a lot. Like, we got a lot of demons. But after that one encounter with Jesus, Jesus cast those, that, those spirits out in an instant. He was in his right mind for the first time in who knows how long. He was the person no one thought could ever have a turnaround, ever thought that that person could ever get a breakthrough. And, and you know why that, 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 that person's in Scripture? So we don't ever give up on our brothers, our sisters, our family members, our, our crazy uncles, our daddies, and say, if I did it for him, I can do it for you. And God is saying here, there's no addiction that you can't overcome. There's no depression you can't overcome. There's no anxiety you can't overcome. Because the one that set that demoniac free is here today. Come on, this is not just a church service. We are here in the house of God. And we have a special guest, and his name is Jesus. But there's one more person that follows after, and it was a lady that had an issue for 12 years. Have you, maybe you've been going through something for a really long period of time. And either you're just going to be convinced this is how it's going to be, or you keep on fighting. And she had a, a, a sickness that would cause her to bleed. It made her an outcast in the society. And she spent all her money and all the doctors she could spend her money on. So not only was she sick, she was poor too now. She was all by herself. But she still had a dream. I want to be healed. And she heard that Jesus was walking through her region. And she started thinking, this is my moment. You know how people get breakthroughs? They start thinking, this is my moment. Come on, somebody right now, you've been thinking about giving up, but there's still something within you that's saying, I'm not giving up. That's why I'm here in the house of God. That's why I'm tuning in. I just believe that my moment is coming around the corner and maybe your moment is tonight. Come on, give God some praise because the one that can change 12 years of misery is here tonight. We're doing what we can. God will do the rest. That's it. That lady just stretched out. She touched Jesus' clothes, bottom of his robe, and she got healed. And Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciple says, what are you talking about who touched? There's thousands of people around you. He goes, nah, somebody touched me in a different way. Come on, somebody's going to get a touch. Come on. I, I, see, I, I know you're part of a crowd, but understand, Jesus is here for an individual tonight that's hungry for a breakthrough. And you're saying, tonight, this Thursday night, is my night. So we're going to have a lot of opportunities, guys. Someone say, take action. 
We're not here to hear. We're here to do. We're here to take action. We're here to do what we've never done before to get results we've never gotten in our lives. Last time we, done, we had an opportunity to sign up to your home to have a Bible study in your home. If you've not done that, thewayconnect.com, you could do that tonight. We're going to do something special. Thursday night, next Thursday night, it's Thursday night, a week from tonight, everyone that wants to start a Bible study in your home or your work or in your neighborhood or in your garage, I don't care where you want to start a Bible study, going through the growth book, I'm going to do some special training. I've never done it. We're going to be here Thursday night live, but you need to sign. The only people who show up is a Wake Connect. What we want to do is get every single home. I want every single home to have the Word of God being taught in your home. Because if you have the Word of God taught in your home, the power of God can, will invade your home. What, 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 what comes before, come on, what comes before a breakthrough, what comes before the world is created, it was the Word. We got to get the word back in our house. We got, come on, we got Facebook there. We got TikTok maybe there. We got Instagram. We got celebrities in your house. We even got Tupac still playing in your house. But it's time to get Jesus in your house by the word being taught. Okay, so thewayconnect.com. Thewayconnect.com. I'm going to be doing a special training Thursday night, 7 o'clock next Thursday. Wayconnect.com. The leadership, um, the leadership lead nights. Uh, they forgot to tell you, if you sign up tonight, I mean, if you sign up, you get the discount, but you got to put the code growth, it's code growth. So if you go right now and try to sign up, it's not going to, it's going to be the regular price, uh, $100 for VIP and then $49 regular price, but 25, you'll get the $25 when you put the word growth. So go right through it, put the word growth and you got that. All right. You guys ready for tonight? Come on. You guys ready for the word tomorrow night, tomorrow night we got. We got fire coming to this house. I'm talking, we got fire. I mean, if you think I'm energetic, wait till you see Jason Lozano. He's just like the energizer bud. He's going to come here with fire tomorrow night. He's gonna, he's, he thinks just like us. He's a disciple maker. Right now, if there's uh, two churches in America that are leading in discipleship. It's ours and, and Freedom Church. And, and Freedom Church. These are two peas in a pod. You do not want to miss Tomorrow night is gonna be. Come on, God said, come on, get ready, get ready. You're almost. I think tonight we're gonna talk about you're almost there, but you're not there yet. And what we're talking about, keep pushing, keep pushing for your breakthrough. I'm gonna say one last thing. The Bible says, the Bible says, don't get weary or get tired in doing right. Because in due season, if you don't give up, you're gonna reap a reward. You know what that means? There's a breakthrough waiting for you. But this is the question. Can you endure enough? Can you go through the process to get your breakthrough? I believe there's a group of people that they're saying, man, I've come too far to give up now. There's nothing to turn back on. Tomorrow night, come and get your breakthrough. But tonight, let's get Pastor Venshard. Come on. Away World Outreach. Welcome all the way to Dallas, Texas. Coming here to the Way World Outreach. This is first time here. Let them know that you're ready to receive the Word of God. Let's give God some praise and let's welcome Him. Give the Way World Outreach welcome. Wow. I don't know what y'all are doing in this place. But something's about to happen. Yeah. No, no, no. You, 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 you think I'm saying that for church stuff. Something is about. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's about to happen. I'm sitting back there like a kid in a candy store saying, Daddy, let me at him. I want to download what God has uploaded in my spirit. I think this is a season for miracles. I think this is a season for a supernatural manifestation of the power and the glory of God. See, there are notes and then there are Holy Ghost notes. You're going to get a little bit of both tonight. 
Now, what in the world is the way? The way, is it a movement? Is it an outreach? What, what, is it a nation? What, what, what did I step into? Oh, gosh. Can you give Pastor Marco, Pastor Lisa, a hand? Come on. Jesus. This church is crazy. I mean, y'all like really believe Jesus. I hope my bishop not watching this. I'm like, Lord, you trying to get me to move to San Bernardino? Well, I want to dive right in because I do believe that this is an impartation. The word I am typically in the prefix means not. So this means that you're not just going to get what part of God has. You're getting ready to get the whole thing. <laughs> Quickly to the book of Matthew chapter number 14. I want to thank this amazing church for your hospitality. Pastor Armando, your bride, Pastor uh, Christy, thank God for allowing me to make it safely here. I thank God for my friend. Listen, you know you're doing something, Pastor Marco, when the movie producers come out. My friend Anthony Rose is in the building. And I was a bit distracted when I saw this five foot four caramel skin, East Texas cocoa butter brown girl sitting in the front. My wife is in the building, Elder Christy Dobbins. <laughs> Super simple because uh, I got a lot to download. The book of Matthew, chapter number 14. I think I'm going to read the NLT version. It is super simple. And you started getting into my, I, I finished my duties for Bible study last night at the Potter's house. And shout out to my bishop for just, <laughs> he's mentored me, he's trained me and prayed for me. And I snuck a little bit of Pastor Marco online. He started talking about Jesus walking on water. I'm like, get away, get away from my stuff. <laughs> and immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side. Somebody shout, other side. Other side. It was the other side of the lake. While he sent the people away home, after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Jesus is praying alone. That's a whole other sermon. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen. We got here, and they're like, they canceled school. Like, the winds are just turbulent. Like, what's going on in California? The wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. You got a bad God. <laughs> when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their fear. They cried, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them and says, don't be afraid. He said, take courage. It's me, baby. Look at somebody say, it's me, baby. He says, I am here. Then Peter called, last few verses, Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you and walk on the water too. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and how boisterous it really was, <sighs> he was terrified and he began to sink. He said, Lord, save me. He shouted, Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith. I said, boy, Jesus was cold-blooded. Man was drowning. He said, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, watch this, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him, says, you really are the son of God. I want to use for a crazy, crazy subject tonight, you're halfway there. 
You are halfway there. Father, we thank you for your divine word. Allow me to decrease while you increase in me. Do something miraculous in this place. Do something that calls the ears of this region to tingle. Let it reverberate around the world. In the invincible name of Jesus, together as a family, we're going to say amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, I really do believe that something is about to happen. I can feel it in my toes. The little hair under this jacket is standing up. My heart is racing. My arms are on edge. The adrenaline is pumping. Might be caramel macchiato, but I feel something. When you see floods in the West, in Santa Barbara, in Santa Monica, and then you see snow in Buffalo, something in our world is topsy-turvy right now. So much chaos and turmoil. Republicans fighting Democrats, Democrats fighting Republicans. You're seeing the increase of drugs and alcohol like never before. Milk prices and egg prices are making me want to be a drug dealer for real like natural food. I know y'all seen the videos. <laughs> Brother just hustling eggs these days. <laughs> People don't want to be married anymore. We're seeing the betrayal of friends. And I haven't, even, I haven't even mentioned all the drama that's going on in your house. I know you smell good. You look good. You got your hat cocked to the side. You chilling. But deep down on the inside is a broken little girl and an angry little boy because there is chaos in your world. Our world, I think, is crying out for an answer, and the world is saying, help. Help! Where are the manifestations of the sons of God? Help! What happened to the water walkers? Help! Whatever happened to the people who believed in Jesus over prophet? Help! Whatever happened to the people who wanted to help you, but they, they didn't have to take a picture for the gram? Help! Whatever happened to the people who didn't want to have sex with you, but they really wanted to love you and marry you? Help! Whatever... Oh, y'all... Oh, is that... Am I just talking about Texas? Help! What happens when your money doesn't eat, men, eat, meet the end of the month and for some reason there is this thing called FICA and there's this thing called tax. You're like, look, just, just let, give me all my money. Help! It's crazy when minimum wage can go up, but for some reason your economy is going down. When will the church take over is the question that the Holy Ghost put in my spirit. When will the kingdom of God emerge? Something is about to happen. Oh, just, just give me a little bit. I, I got to do what the master said do, and then after that, the rest is, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, it might get crazy in this place. I do believe that now, for some reason, is the time. Now is the time to be saved. Now is the time to be delivered. Now is the time to really be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now is the time to be healed. Now is the time to evangelize. Now is the time to disciple. Now is the time to start a business if you ever go start one. Now is the time to go back to school, what you're afraid of. Now is the time to believe God for healing. Now is the time to walk in victory. Now is the time to accept your call in ministry. I know you got hurt before, but when are you gonna stand up, preacher? You keep waiting on everybody else. Whatever happened to your call? Oh, God, let me, let me, let me back away from that. Marion Williamson says, it's not our darkness, but it's really our light that we are afraid of. You are deeply powerful beyond measure, but you keep dumbing down who you are because you dummy down your God. And because you dummy down your God, therefore, you've got low self-esteem. See, you don't see him high and lifted up and his train filling the temple. So therefore, your ego fills the temple. Your pride fills the temple. www.bigbooty.com fills the temple. Lust fills the temple. Shooting up fills the temple. Sex fills... Oh, uh, no, I can't. Can I talk to Kevin? Can we be real in this place? When are you going to really believe God for who he really is? 
Now is the time for you to believe God for who he is. We See, see the, the old church, when I started talking about God, somebody would have took off running. Somebody would have started jumping because he's so high you can't get over him. He's so low you can't get under him. I believe God is so powerful. If he turned, he could create a tornado. If Listen, if God had dandruff, he'd comb his hair and there'd be snow over the continent of Africa. I believe God shot the first three-pointer. That's why Saturn had his ring around it. God who's watching over you. God who kept you in a car wreck. God who saved you. God who delivered you. God who kept you from being killed. God, it was God Almighty. Woo, I'm talking about the everlasting God. God, he's my father. God, he's my mother. I'm talking about God. He's Jehovah Jireh. That means he's your provider. He's Jehovah Nisi. Wait a minute. That means he's your banner against the enemy. He says this far and no further. Oh, God. Wait, let me say it in, in a different way. Alabat Señor Cristo. I'm talking about the everlasting God. Before there was a where or a when or a this or a that, he was God. Before your grandparents met, he was God. Before you ever, your mother dated your father, he was God Almighty. I'm talking about God who's super fragile, casual, licks the expialidocious. He's God. He's God in the middle of your dreams. He's God when you're in a fight. He's God on your job. He's God in your business. He is God Almighty. Lord, have mercy. And it's time that we reverence this God for who he is. But you know what? We've gotten, can I take my time for just a moment? Within a particular moment that I've been allotted, I've got to tell you that we've gotten comfortable in our blessings. And so instead of, instead of praising God, we are on the throne. And the reason sometimes praise and worship doesn't break out like it really needs to break out is because we are on the throne and he's sitting back saying, do you want me to worship you? And now you get mad at me because you don't have the results that you thought I should have given you. But you see yourself high and lifted up. And your train is filling the temple. And for some reason, you get mad when I don't applaud you. I think it's time for us to see God in a different light. Because we've got so used to the blessings of God and the power of God. And I do believe some miracles are about to happen. I believe this is the season of supernatural abundance. I do believe this is the season for God to give you fuel and fight for the power. I do believe the houses are going to be built. I do believe you're getting, getting ready to become millionaires. Wait a minute, forget about millionaires. You need to be multi-millionaires in this economy. I do believe that God's getting ready to bless your household. Some of you getting ready to get new cars. I do believe favor and open doors are coming. Do you? I, I wish I had somebody who would believe it. I do believe your children are about to get saved. I do believe that somebody's getting ready to be raised up in your family. It might as well be you. You are looking at everybody and say, it might as well be me. It might as well be me. God is getting ready to bless you. God is getting ready to download something that you're going to upload for future generations. Let me tell you something. God going to bless you so good. Your great-grandchildren, they going to kiss your picture and say, he was a bad mamma jamma. God is getting ready to do something amazing. But I found... You don't have trouble believing God for blessings. Your issue is you've gotten comfortable in the blessings. See, sometimes we are blinded by the blessing. Therefore, comfort becomes the gateway of our sin. And the new sin is being comfortable and not being stretched. All the blesser ever really wanted is for us to fall in love with the blesser and not the blessing. Our situation and our circumstance sometimes begins to dictate our outcome. And I submit to you that you've gotten too comfortable. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord told me to tell you, he's getting ready to stretch you. He's getting ready to stretch your faith. He's getting ready to stretch your mind. He's getting ready to stretch your money. He's getting ready to stretch your family. He's getting ready to stretch your focus. He's getting ready to stretch your vision. He's getting ready to stretch your ministry. He's getting ready to stretch your body. He's getting ready to stretch your company. He's getting ready to stretch your position. He's getting ready to stretch your family. It's the stretch. I was back there and I said, Lord, let me stretch a little bit because I might just take off running on stage. Stretching prepares your body for the elasticity, elongation for you to be able to last. See, many of us fast at the beginning of the year, and that's real cool for the first two or three weeks, but I want to see you fasting in September and October and November. I'm going to find the same. Are you fasting in December? Because the stretching is not just for a season. In our text today, Jesus is getting ready to stretch the disciples. 
Jesus has already healed the man with the withered arm. He said, stretch forth. Jesus is breaking all kind of rules. He says, I'll heal you on the Sabbath. He's already healed the woman with the issue of blood. Oh, God. And the reason why she's touching the hem of his garment, because the hem was on the bottom. And everybody's grappling after the top, but the real glory is at the bottom. So if you're in a bottom situation and you feel like you last, that's when a blessing is about to come. That's when a miracle is about to come. It's at the bottom. If you humble yourself, then he would exalt Oh, then he would exalt you. You keep trying to be exalted. The glory is at the bottom because the bottom is the foundation. The bottom is the platform. The bottom is the builder. The bottom is the blessing. He's already done so many amazing things. And Jesus says, let me stretch the crew a little bit. He says, let me feed these 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. He takes his little boy happy build and just, just stretches it. And for some reason, he says, let's go to the other side. And immediately he constrained the disciples to get into the ship. Where did they get into? And where were they going? Y'all real smart. A plus. <laughs> what do you do when you get in a ship with people that you really don't like? Because sometimes the impartation doesn't flow because the love isn't flowing. Imagine 12 men on one boat without Jesus. You have them and you can't get along with your friend. Anyway, uh, so... <laughs> They're in the boat. And for some reason, Jesus goes apart to pray alone. It's interesting that the master builds himself up by praying alone. He doesn't have to pray in front of the crowd to be powerful. While he's praying, the storm is coming. I don't know if it was a tsunami. I don't know if it was a typhoon. I don't know if it was a hurricane. I don't know what kind of wind this was, but this wind was so boisterous. Just imagine the ship is rocking and reeling back and forth. And all of a sudden, Jesus says, let me go. Let me, let me go check out these boys. Let, let, me go, let me go check on these boys. Jesus starts walking on the water. <sighs> Your God is a water walker. I wish I had time to tell you that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, but the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. No wonder Jesus was able to walk on water because the Spirit was on the inside of him, so this was water walking on top of water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living. Where do you think the water came from? He's filled with the Spirit, so he's walking on water. If you study it, it's like 20, 30 furlongs. This means Jesus is walking on the water for three to four miles. Visibly. Amen. What up, Swan? Chill out, well. You good, shark fish. Stay over there, stingrays. I'm still 100% gobble, 100% man. Don't bite me right now. Imagine your God walking on top of things that would have pulled other people down. This is your year to have courage in the crisis. Jesus' manifestation was having courage in the crisis. We talk about, I'm going to manifest, I'm going to manifest. The manifestations of the sons of God has a lot to do with courage when there's a crisis. Jesus is showing these boys how to have courage when everything's going haywire. What do you do when all H-E-W hockey sticks is breaking out? Do you cry? Oh, it's a ghost! These boys cried like schoolyard girls and said, it's a ghost! Because you don't recognize God when he's stretching you. And the reason you don't recognize God when he's stretching you is because you've gotten too comfortable in the blessing. You say you want to go to the next level, but the next level has a lot to do with you growing out of you. If I'm going to be filled with the Spirit, I can't be filled with me and the Spirit at the same time. I'm, I got to choose. It's a ghost. The 11 were silent, but somebody had to speak out. Who spoke out? Peter says, Lord. He doesn't say, Emmanuel, which is God tabernacle with us. 
He doesn't say, God. He says, Lord, is that you? A lot of people see him as God, but they don't see him as Lord. When I see him as Lord, I've got to obey him. I've got to submit to him. When I see him as Lord, that means he's on the throne, and then I'm down here worshiping. When I see him as Lord, that means he's got the power, and I've got to worship. He says, Lord, is that you? And I got to park right here for a moment because he says, if Lord, if, if, is, is that you? Because if that's you, let me come to you walking on the water. This is a bad illustration. Don't crucify me for it. But it's almost like Jesus was saying what my wife was saying, like right after we got married. Come get it. Come, come, come get it. Boy, you come, come, come get it. Come get it. Because if you really want the anointing, you got to get out of what you're in. Some of you have been stuck in the boat of complacency and laziness and two or three scriptures. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And he says, come. Jesus said one, one word, come. Whenever God speaks to you, it's always a command. Away with these people. Oh, and God said, and God said, hey, shut up. Because God gives commands. And he speaks in cri critical moments and times. And he says, come. And Peter says, I can do it. He gets out and he's walking on the water. Whoo! Peter becomes the second man to break a world record. He's walking on the water. Can you imagine Peter walking on the water? And this is where I got a part because he's halfway there. And then the Bible says that Peter saw that the wind was boisterous. When have you ever seen wind? You will see things that are not there when your self-esteem is not as high as it needs to be. You will see things that are not there when the devil is in your ear. When fear rises, you will see. He saw that the wind was, how do you see wind? Peter, you didn't see wind. You saw the accents of the wind. And this is why I got to talk to you because the devil's been messing with you. He's been tearing up everything and everybody around you and you're scared because you say, I'm next. The wind was throwing the water around. You say, I'm next. The wind was throwing the boat around. You say, I'm next. You got to stop believing that the devil is going to take you out. You got power over the enemy, baby. You got power to tread upon surface. You got power on the inside. You got the power of God. You got the peace of God. You got the, oh, oh, you got power. He's halfway there. And something on the inside of him says, go back. I got to paraphrase a little bit. And it's right here that the Lord started talking to me about people in here, you want to go back. I know, you, you don't want me to name what you want to go back to, but I already got it in my notes. The Lord started talking to me last week, and he said, many people, you want to go back to drinking. You want to go back to smoking. You want to go back to the drugs. You want to go back to the woman that you left your wife for. You, you want to go back. You want to go back to the man you were flirting with. You, you, you want to go back. You want to go back to low self-esteem. You want to go back to people who dummied you down. You want to go back to the people who, you, who rejected you. You want to go back to the church that you know wasn't rocking like the way. For some reason, you want to go back. You want to go back to people who don't see you as high as you need to be. You want to go back. You know why you want to go back? Because you're comfortable. But as, as I try to hasten to somewhat of a close. Now, you know preachers lie, right? We got like six closes and five hoops, and then a hallelujah. <laughs> and Peter is halfway there. And he sees when in his mind. He says, Lord, save me. At least he knew who to call. <laughs> Some people, they like pigs, they like the mud but I'm talking to a few sheep in here. You don't want your white, you don't want your white wool to stay dirty. You want to get washed. They talk about you for doing what you did, but at least you came to church, baby. They talk about you for doing what you did, but at least you back in the house, praising God. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I need your grace. It's sufficient. Lord, give me mercy. Lord, I, Lord, help me. See, we talk about people real good, but we don't talk about those who are God chasers. 
those who will chase after his glory. Oh, God, sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. Lord, hallelujah, help my lust. Lord, hallelujah, help my anger. Lord, deliver me. Help, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. It's when you're halfway there that the Lord told me that he sent something to bless. Can, can I tell you? It's just me, you, and probably a thousand plus and millions of people watching online. Can, can, I'll tell y'all next time. What do you mean? Here is the secret of greatness as we transition to a full impartation. Because some impartation is you receiving in your mind that God has already helped you before you ever even ask for help. The same thing that made you fear is going to be the same thing that carries you on. You don't know what I'm talking about yet. The same wind that was a storm is what the Lord told me to tell you to depend on. When you're halfway there, that means you're in the middle. And it's in this middle nebulous space that the devil tells you to go back. But if you're halfway there, you might as well go to the other side. The same thing that carried you to the middle is the same thing that's going to bless you to coast to the other side. Remember, the wind is throwing the boat around. It's rocking and reeling like a drunken man on Saturday night. The wind is doing its thing. And here's what the Lord told me to tell you. When you're halfway there, depend on the wind. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. That's the issue. You've been trying to do it in your own strength, Peter. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. It's the same wind. It's going to be the wind of the Holy Ghost. It's going to be the wind of his power. It's going to be the wind that pulls you. Jesus says, no, 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 come on. I got you because I'm walking, and the, I'm walking in the wind. The wind is going to be the thing that fills you. The wind is, oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. The Lord is getting ready to blow in your place. He's getting ready to blow in your house. He's getting ready to blow in your mind. He's getting ready to blow in your business. He's getting ready to blow in this church. He's getting ready to blow in everything that you thought needed. Oh, God, you in a dry place. You in a barren place. But God's getting ready to blow it, blow it, blow it. For what you need, you can't move it yourself. Your money won't move it. Your prayer had not moved it. It's going to be the wind. The wind has got to carry it. The wind is getting ready to carry it. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Let me give it. Wait. Who else depended on the wind? What do you mean? What do you mean? Who else? God said, Moses, what's that in your hand? Lift up that staff. The wind begins to part the water. Come here, come here, come here, Joshua. Step your foot down. And the wind had to make sure that the water stood up so they could cross over on dry land. Come here, come here, Ruth. What, what do you mean? The wind, the wind of the Spirit. Say, I'm going to tell you something. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed, which means that Ruth had some kind of spirit on the inside and said, wait a minute, I can't stay in Moab. I got to go with Naomi because something is pushing me. Something is on the inside of me. It's got to be the wind. No wonder David says, wait a minute, hold up. Is this a Goliath or is this an opportunity? Is this an obstacle or is this an opportunity? Is this a setback or is this a setup for his glory? See, that's the issue. You've been looking at it wrong. Is this a problem or is this a promise? Is this pain or is this power? Is this misery or is this ministry? It depends on the vantage point in which and in, in, in how you see it. You've been looking at the wind as destruction, but God said the wind is destiny. But because your purpose has been in the hand of your mind and not in the hand of God, you keep saying, I'm halfway there, so I might as well quit. I'm halfway there, so I might as well give up. I'm tired. Watch out for these. It's really like three words. I am tired, but they put them all together in two words. I'm tired. I'm tired, boss. I'm tired, wife. I'm tired, husband. No, no, no. You're not tired. Your flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Ah, yo, yo, when you're halfway there, you've got to depend on the wind. And when you depend on the wind, the Holy Ghost blows in your situation. And he blows in your mind. And I started asking myself, why didn't the other disciples say anything? Why didn't they help Peter? Why didn't they, I, I started thinking, I said, well, why didn't they make fun of him? 
they didn't make fun of him because they knew he had the courage to go halfway. And for some of you, you feel like you're stuck because you're halfway in the middle of it and you don't know how it's going to end, but you don't realize that the other people are cheering you on because at least you stepped out. God is going to carry you the rest of the way. The reason you got to shout right now is not so much because of the wind. It's because God is getting ready to carry you. God is getting ready to move you. God is getting ready to do something so super fragile, casualistic, expialidocious that the power of God is about to shift you. Wait a minute. I hear that word shift again. We're in 2023. 2023. Two, which is the number of agreement. Zero, which is nothing. This means that God says if you will agree over nothing in the situation and will agree for the number three, which is a resurrection, I will change your life. Let me let me slow it down again. Two plus zero plus two plus three. Wait a minute. I think I got seven. Seven is perfection. Two is the number of agreement. Uh, let, 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 let me slow it down. On day number one, he said, let there be light. And it was like, light, 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 light. Day number two, he says, let me separate the firmness, which means there would be clouds above and clouds beneath. So number two is agreement. That's, there was agreement above the earth, but agreement below the earth, because the earth is a circle. Now, I, my flat friends might disagree, but the earth is a circle. So on, if any two or three agree as touching anything, so two is a number of agreement and zero is nothing. You got me? And three is resurrection. In three days, he got up with all power in his hands. They pierced him in between the side. They pierced him in between the metal torso space, uh, spaces of his foot. They pierced him in between the radius and the corpus bones because the prophecy said that this is going to be the perfect spotless lamb of God. No bones could be broken so that Roman soldiers were experts in grooving the spikes through him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. The historian Josephus said some 360 braided. And then all of a sudden they pierced him in the side. Blood and water comes out. But on the third day, Jesus got up with all power in his hand. Three is the number of resurrection. Three is the number of restoration. Three is a rebirthing and a recharging soul. Wait, wait a minute, we're in 2023. I forgot to tell you, Happy New Year. This is a brand new year. If you will agree over nothing, the situation will agree for the resurrection. God will perfect your situation. Seven is the number of perfection. On oh, the seventh day, God said, I'm a rest. The only thing that'll break up my rest is you not believing who I am. It's going to be sin. This means that this is a year of abundance. This means that this is a year of supernatural manifestation, and you're going to have to depend on the wind. If the wind is your friend. Somebody say, the wind is my friend. If the wind is my friend, that means even the elements around me are pushing me to greatness. The reason you're being pushed to greatness is because I told you to begin a service, something's about to happen. This impartation it's for you to realize that things are getting ready to happen faster than they would normally happen. Some of you are going to have to get loans, but some of you, it's going to be paid off. Some of you are going to get grants, and some of you are going to get holy handshakes with checks to take care of what you need to take care of. Some of you are going to get houses. Some of you are going to get developments. Some of you... Some of you going to get the real thing that you've been waiting on. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I didn't believe in you. I'm sorry, girl. You know what? Come here. You my family. Come here. You are my friend. Because people will believe in you when the wind is behind you. They will not believe until the wind pushes you into your place of destiny. This is a wind blowing service. And the Lord told me that because the wind blew you in, I don't know who I'm talking to. There's several of you in here. If the wind hadn't have pushed you in, you'd be doing something you weren't supposed to outside. It's great that we shout and praise and magnify God, but I want to talk to the real soldiers who struggle to get in here. Some of you were halfway here and you almost turned around because of the traffic. Some of you were halfway here and you got a call that got on your last nerves. It's for you that I came to tell you that you're halfway there. You are halfway to a miracle. You are halfway there. No wonder he would give me this message on the second day of an impartation. 
because something's getting ready to happen tomorrow night. I'm just, th listen, if Pastor Marco was the appetizer and I'm a part of the entree, you're getting ready to get the dessert tomorrow and it's going to be a complete meal. I want to pray and speak into those who are hungry. I've only got a few moments, so I can only do this for the serious people. If you know this word is talking to you, if you know you haven't been living right, and you know that there is something in this word tonight that's causing you to repent. There's something in this word tonight that's causing you to say, God, I got to do better. I need you to bum rush this altar. If you know that you are backslidden and out of fellowship with God, I need you to hit this altar. No, 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 no. So, see, some, some of you are not saved. And this is the season and the moment for you to give your life to Jesus. This is the moment. This is the time. You might be watching us online. You're not watching us by mistake. You're not watching us by happenstance. The glory of the Lord will come get you. God will save you in the bed of a lover that's not, that you're not even married to. God will save you while you're drinking and watching us right now. God will save you while you're hitting that blunt, passing and saying, give me another hit. God will save you with a needle in your arm. God will save you, and he, and, and he knows that you got Pornhub in your history. God will save you no matter what. It's for you I come. No way I'm supposed to be on this stage. How am I on this stage? How did I ever get to grace the stage of the Potter's House of Dallas, Texas. God called me. God is calling you. I'm waiting for a few of you because God is calling you. give you a quick testimony while others are wrestling. The feeling that you feel on the inside, that's God calling you. I see somebody who's pregnant in this, and you're just not pregnant in the spirit. You're pregnant naturally. You're not sure what you want to do. Get to this altar. God is with you. I see you in my spirit. Get here. Get here. Pastor Marco, I grew up in a home where there was both physical and sexual abuse. They never thought we'd make it out of East Waco. My stepfather was a heroin addict. He beat my mother, he beat us. He was sexually abusive to my sister. So when I start ministering, I see you. I can walk in the room and see women who've been touched inappropriately. I see you. And it's not just women, there are many men, I see you. Youth pastor was talking early. I started to just throw my phone. I was so excited that you're doing something for the youth. I can see the boys. I see the little boy. You, 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 you're beating your wife. You're beating your girlfriend. But you're really mad at yourself. I see you. And as I try to hasten to a quick close, I want to tell you. Somehow. 
We, me and my brothers, my brother and my sister, we would have been caught up in the system. But the Lord snatched us out. Snatched us. If God could save me, he could save anybody in this crowd. I owe him my life. I've hit my time. I've got to say a prayer. You've got prayer warriors right here who are praying for you, and I'm going to pray alongside of them. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, lift your hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see you. If you backslid and walked away from the, from the Lord, lift your hand. Mm-hmm. I see you. I see you and I've been you. Whew, I don't know what God's getting ready to do. He's saving you and calling you back to him at an impartation night. Father, we thank you for your children. We thank you for your sons and your daughters. The molestation didn't break them. The pregnancy couldn't hold them. The alcohol and the drugs couldn't keep them down. God, you says if we confess with our mouth, but yet believe in our heart that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, rose on the third day with all power in his hand, we would be saved. Save every drug addict at this altar. Save every wayward son. Save every porn addict at this altar. Save every adulterer, every luster at this altar. Save everybody who didn't believe in themselves. They believed in everybody else. Save, touch, and send the wind of your spirit. Blow, 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 Holy Ghost. Blow until we become a new woman. Blow until we become a new man. Blow until we go to Bible study. Blow until we read growth books. Blow until we come to church every Sunday. Blow until we repent. Blow until we get a hunger and a thirst for righteousness so that we will be filled. Now, God, I thank you for changing, redirecting, and restoring each and every hand that was raised for the people at the altar who needed strength. I pray strength in secret places. God sees the secret pain and the tears that you haven't shared with anybody else. God is with you. Lord, I pray you send Michael the archangel to fight on their behalf. I pray you send Gabriel to send a word of encouragement in due season. Whatever you do, God, change us, redirect us, and push us from our potential to our purpose. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in the invincible name of Jesus. Come on, family. Come on, family. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, how many received that word tonight? Come on, give God some praise. You've received that word tonight. Can we give the man of God a, a round of applause? Church, we're halfway there. We're halfway there. God is going to show up and bring a word tomorrow night. And we need to be ready. Right now, if you need prayer, we have a team up here that's ready to pray with you. Let's get ready for everything that God has for us this impartation. Tomorrow, Pastor Jason's coming. Let's get everything that God has for us. Tomorrow, let's show up at 7 o'clock. What we're going to do right now, we're going to sing one more song, and we're going to give God some praise. But don't forget, if you want to start a Bible study in your home, you can do that by going to thewayconnect.com. Let's make it official. Let's make our home a place where disciples are made in Jesus' name. You want to get connected to your next step, you can see our team in the foyer. If you want to purchase a lead night ticket, you can do so tonight. Church, let's give God some praise 
for the word that we received tonight. Come on, how many were blessed tonight? Let's give them praise. Let's worship him.